Bruce Derrickson. I play bass in a band by Bears, and this is Anti Hero Online. The first thing that I want to talk to you about, man, is uh, you guys are currently on your first tour of the UK. How's that going, and how does it feel to be touring the UK? Now we just we we got home like in the in the beginning of this week. We never we've never been to, which is weird. UK is pretty close to Sweden, and we've never been to the UK. Uh, and we've been playing in a band in the band for like almost almost five years, I think. So it's it's cool to finally get to go to the UK. Uh, we did not really know what to expect since most of our like fan base is in America, I guess. So it was kind of like uh, some shows we played has had lesser people there, but we had some shows where people showed up and people were moshing. So overall, it was like a positive kind of sick experience it was cool it's weird trying to figure out like the the, the accent is um we, we're super americanized when it comes to like speaking english and stuff <laughs> and tr- trying to figure out where some what some people were saying like in the northern parts were yeah it, it was it was uh it was hard but uh the overall experience was positive we had we met a bunch of great people uh, the yeah it was just positive. We got to play with some sick bands. UK got a cool music scene. The bands are on on another level when it comes to quality and stuff. So it was sick. It was fun, nonetheless. And how did the fans kind of react to the live performance and the music that you guys were putting out? Good, I guess. Like we we didn't expect anyone to like show up. Uh, we don't know like the the. I guess we could call it like easy core scene. Uh, we know they have like a good pop punk scene since like Nick Deep or from the UK. I think they have a band called Rome and a bunch of other good bands, but it seems like they're, yeah, they, they know what they're doing. Uh, yeah. So I, it was good, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and now that you guys are back home, are you, um, going to continue working on the new album? Absolutely, like that's. I would have wanted us to like finish, basically finish it before we went. Uh, we've been putting a lot of like thought into it. I guess uh, we try to. I wouldn't say branch out too much, but we try to like diversity. Have always been a big thing for us when writing records. We have a like a what do you call it? Like a niche genre. We play like a very. I wouldn't say. A lot of the bands that play the genre we play, uh, like the the pop punk with the breakdowns, like the you could call it the pop punk with the metal uh, dynamics. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of those bands, without being sound like a douchebag, but a lot of those bands sound, sound kind of similar. Yeah. And what we tried to do on our last album was give some sort of diversity. So like we have the songs that are lesser metal more pop punk and then we have the songs that are like plain metal no pop punk this time around we try to add a, a bit more pop into it uh make it more easy for the for the mainstream audience i would i would guess but still not go too far we don't want to lose the people that has been there from the beginning you know listening to all the old tracks and stuff uh and still like keeping like doing some songs that are playing like hard metal angry just because it's fun like writing angry songs it doesn't make sense uh you should be like angry when you write angry songs but that's almost when you're the happiest (laughs) just being plain angry yeah it gives gives you an opportunity to kind of like get that rage out Yeah, yeah yeah i think like when you tour and you meet a lot of different bands. The bands that are like playing like indie and like the weird, uh, like popular genres, those are often the bands that are kind of like hard to not get into the music, but get into the, the people behind mm-hmm. the music. While you meet metal bands, they're almost always the nicest people ever. Oh, it's yeah. like they put all their anger into their music. So they have no anger left, and they're always the people that come up to you and are super super nice and introduce themselves and stuff it's pretty funny that uh that the that the band's making the i don't know the popular more radio friendly stuff for the people that are 
harder to understand, I guess. They're more douchey than, you know, the the heavier bands that you would expect to be douchey. I don't want to say douchey because I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but <laughs> metal, I would just say that, say it like this. There's no, there's nothing wrong with any of those bands at all. They're, they're nice, but the metal bands are usually the nicest. Like oh, yeah. The, the people, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're into metal and have been like listening to a lot of metal bands, interviewing metals, but metal bands, you could maybe agree, I guess, that metal bands are very, I don't know, it's like all the anger are gone. <laughs> Oh, yeah, totally. And I mean, that, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about before I started recording. When I interviewed Hannes from uh, Sabaton, he was he was super chill, super humble. And then, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I interviewed some of these other bands and they're kind of like, you know, snotty and, you know, stuck up. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ha-ha. And it's not it's it's not in every case. Like we met a bunch of bands that doesn't play anything close to metal that are super nice. But for some reason, metal bands are, I don't know, the nicest people. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and going back to the album, um, it's expected to drop in the first quarter of 2018. Are you guys still on track with that? Yeah, that's that's our plan. We, we try to stick to the plan. We try to, like, like in the coming, coming weeks, we, we're just going to, like, we're in the last stretch where we're basically just re-record stuff, like re-record uh like what do you call it we make we, we do vocal takes when we write it mm-hmm. and when we finish it up we redo a lot of those ta- those takes and put like more effort into them because when we have it all written down we just want to like polish it basically so that's that's the last thing we have to do now we're just polishing some guitar parts some vocal parts uh, i know max our drummer is gonna go over everything see so that uh, the, the drumming is up to par with how he wants it and stuff. So yeah, it's just like the polishing phase. It's kind of tedious, but it's uh, it feels good that we're hopefully soon gonna be finished with the with the second one. And what was the band's mentality when you went back into the studio to start recording this new record? We were stoked. Like we are, we are up to this point. We're like a very DIY-ish band like I mean having Victory as a label is is, is, is a good thing it's super we, we couldn't be happier because it helps us get getting our music out there but like we've always been this DIY band so recording has never been like okay uh, now we're done tours now we're done this now we're done that now we're gonna go into the studio for two months and just record like we basically started like putting some ideas down when we were done with the last album so some of the stuff on the new thing is like riffs or vocal takes that has been been around for almost a year mm-hmm. and some stuff is like last minute like stuff we made before we went to the uk basically so the mentality has basically been you're always still to record like that's that's how i started getting into music i've never been a very skillful player that kind of came later i'm not still i'm still not a very skillful player i manage but like recording and producing and making the actual song strong song structures that's always been what we're super into so i mean i'm stoked i'm always stoked to record i bet as soon as this album is done we're gonna go in and start doing more stuff new stuff trying new stuff out and shit so i'm stoked and are you guys one of those types of bands that when you're in tour mode, you're just like straight with only focused on the tour instead of creating new content. Or are you guys kind of, you know, fucking around with some stuff while you're on the road as well? We, we try our touring situations up to this point have never been so that we can like record. Uh, I know some bands are touring in nightliners and I guess that, that is, makes it way easier to just like try recording stuff. But, it happened that we we like we got some ideas on the road and we like sat down in a green room or whatever and plugged up the computer and recorded some stuff. I know we have an angry song on the new album with riffs basically made in Kentucky or something. <laughs> uh, but other than that, like I'm always creative. So when we are, we're on tour, I always bring my computer and I know we've done merch designs on tour. We taking pictures and we plan stuff basically we haven't really like put on 
that much time into to recording, but a little bit just to so we, our fingers doesn't I don't know spass out. <laughs> And one of the things that really stuck out to me about the band was the recent video that Abandoned by Bears has released, which was the cover of uh, the old Jackson 5 song. Um, what, yeah. it, what influenced the band to cover a Jackson 5 song in that way? And kind of like you kept it close to the original, but then you added your own flair to it. Uh, I mean, like Jackson 5, that, that song is like, have you ever watched movies? That's like one of those songs that's always been there. It's either that that one song or ABC by Jackson 5. So, like, it was kind of a, like an obvious choice. We've actually talked about it for a very long time. Uh, the song itself has been, I think we recorded it like, oh, yeah, maybe a, almost a year ago. It's been just waiting for a, for a right moment to to release it and like before this tour and everything we wanted to put something out to get people stoked so that's kind of why the reason the, the so it took such a long time for the song to be released but um uh, i don't know it's like it's it's just a sick song it's a it's a happy song and it makes you happy and of course we wanted to put a, put our own like flair on it so i don't know it's it just felt like a like a good match i guess and we would, I, we talked about it like a, a common thing when bands make covers nowadays is that they make covers of either like very popular songs. And looking through like the like the billboards or whatever right now, the the popular songs I guess are like there's a lot of like hip hop, trap, R and B, and we love that kind of music, but I don't think it's suitable for our kind of style i guess yeah. to try to make i don't know make a post malone cover or something <laughs> um so i mean it, it just made sense we, we wanted to make a cover and that well, that's what we ended up doing the jackson five thing and i'm not saying as soon as something cool shows up some some artist releases a cool song that is like a major key and uh like upbeat it's very possible that we try to make a cover of that song instead oh yeah and i mean that's that was my first experience listening to abandoned by bears and i listened to that and i was like shit this is good like (laughs) most of the time when you hear uh, and and i I don't want to classify this classify you guys as this but you know that punk goes pop type covers yeah, 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 yeah. most of the time they yeah, drop yeah. the ball and it's and it's not good and it sounds too forced with you guys it sounded more natural and it sounded like you tried to kind of give a nod to you know the jackson five and michael jackson and then oh, still the, the keep fir- the first thing yourself. we were talking about is the first thing we were talking about is like let's not mess up the vocal melodies because that's that's where the gold is and just try to like make the like to make the background instrumentals stay true to like the melodies mm-hmm. but I still have it like the like the like the kind of metal dynamic we like to do like with a, a lot of double bass pedal yeah and uh, like the breakdowns put some screams on it uh, and we decided to do it on a verse which basically sounds like the first verse so we don't uh, lose any of the nice melodies that Jackson 5 are known for you made it heavy, but you also kept true to, you know, the original content of the song. And that, that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about it. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I couldn't be happier. Thank you very much for the, for the nice words. (laughs) It's no problem at all, man. Um, the festival seasons pretty much across the world, they're pretty much wrapping up. Um, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you guys looking forward to when it comes to 2018, other than the release of the album? Are you looking to get in with any of the festivals in America, Warp Tour, any of that type of stuff? The only thing, like like doing Warp Tour, is as I guess any band that plays some sort of like every anything from like punk to metal. I guess it's like it's a it's a dream, and I I, I would be happier than ever i guess if we got to do that i don't know for sure if anything like that will happen but i'm pretty sure that we will like the pl- 
plan is to basically go back to America and play more shows. America is, you, you have the scene, like the people are crazy for the music. Playing shows in America is so fun. The kids go crazy on the shows. Like playing a, so- a show and see people sing along or mosh pit or like going crazy. It's, I don't know, it's the best feeling ever. And I, I'm pretty sure we will do another Mer- American tour. I don't know how or when. But uh, I'm a 99.9% sure we will be one of those. And I would love to go out in Europe too. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll see. Right now, like the, like the main focus is just getting the album done, just trying to get new videos done. We have a lot of ideas. We try to like filter them out. I think we have like a 20, 20 music video ideas. Oh, wow. Some are pretty cool. Some are just plain stupid uh, <laughs> we'll see we'll see what we'll we'll come up with uh, but that's like just prepare so before we do any tour we have something to showcase something to bring with us so that's like the only plan right now is just to finish everything and but i'm i'm pretty sure we'll do tours uh the best thing ever is is, is if we could just tour a bunch next year Oh yeah, touring is fun. Touring is is it's an adventure, <laughs> nonetheless. It's um, yeah, it's, it, it is what nothing like I thought it would be, and more than I thought we thought it would be. You know, oh, so yeah. Vans Warp Tour actually just opened up um, requests from fan bases. So yeah, I mean there is that <laughs> opportunity right there. Get a, get yeah, everybody if, you if know. Is listening. Yeah, if anyone is listening to this that likes a band by Bears, you don't even have to like a band by Bears. You can just think I sound like a nice guy. <laughs> you can like Sweden. Uh, you can like Sabaton. We talked a bit about Sabaton. Just go into the the Warp Tour uh, Paul thing and just write a band by Bears on all the five forums. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll see if... The if only it, five bands that you want to see are abandoned by Bears. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put put our name everywhere. We'll, we'll be happy. <laughs> and that leads me to my next question. Then, what inspired the name? It's unique. It's different. Um, were you guys really abandoned by a bear at some point? Oh, we met this dude in UK who like came up to us out of nowhere, and he's like, "I've never heard of you. I've like the, your name is is uh, says something to me. I have this." idea how Bear Grylls, the adventurer, brought you out into the woods, like <laughs> showing you how to survive, and then he just left. And uh, and and some other dude in some podcast a while back had this other idea that uh, big dudes uh, with a lot of hair are called bears, basically, mm-hmm. and how we are like a s- bunch of like small, skinny dudes, and we have this group of big, hairy men who took care of us. And just left us <laughs> but um there's no good explanation to the band name the the, the real story behind is it, it is that um uh, frederick and jacob had this old band before we even started this band or this band was like a like a thought or something uh, and they had this idea to the, the old band was called act of chaos and it was a metal band and they wanted to change that name and jacob came up with the idea a band by bears and the drummer i remember i was in the in the room when they, when they had the discussion he was like no 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 it sounds dumb and, and he wanted to call the band abandoned by lichens you know the werewolf uh, vampire hybrid and they were like no <laughs> and they just stopped the discussion and abandoned by bears was never used and then when we started this band we were like dude it fits it's cool it starts with an A, so it's always on the top of like lists and stuff. Yeah, and I mean like, it's it's a cool name, and bears are a sick animal. <laughs> so that's the like the, the the best explanation I can give. There's no like real thought behind it. Uh, it just stuck, and uh, we hope we won't get sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I don't think you will. Um, the the name's unique. It stands out a lot, and it's not it's not something simple. It 
it I think it really fits the band well for the style of music that you create. Yeah, I, th- I think so too. The, like the like the genre in general is full of weird band names. So I mean, it's not that weird. It could have been weirder if we played. I don't know some very I don't know. If you played folk music, it might music. be a little different. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That would be sick though. If I saw I saw like a folk band named the Band by Bears. <laughs> And before before I started recording, we were talking about uh, your musical uh, background and the influences that influenced the sound of Abandoned by Bears. Let's touch a little bit about that before I let you go. Me, personally, I'm like a pop punk. I've listened to everything. Like, I started out, like, when I started playing bands, I was super into, like, Misfits and, like, a lot of kind of gritty pop. No, no, pop punk, like, like just punk, like hardcore punk and a lot of rock and roll. And it's like started to go into like emo music and it ended up being like, I was super into like pop punk for a while. And I'm, I still am. Uh, lately, I started to listen to a lot of the old bands I listened to. But I would say like the main influence, like starting this band, especially I like the earlier stuff is like Motion City Soundtrack. That's one of my like all-time favorite bands. Uh, Blink, of course. It would be weird if I didn't like Blink. Uh, New Found Glory. But uh, I know also like Jacob, our guitar player, who writes a lot of the riffing, like the, does a lot of the riffing. He is super into metal. And that kind of like makes, makes our sound, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we're, me and uh, Frederick... And Leon are super into like uh, like pop punk and happier upbeat stuff. We're into a lot of other stuff on the side, like hip hop and rap and and electronic music and stuff. Uh, but Jacob and Max are more into like the metal stuff. I know Max is into a lot of like Avenged Sevenfold, like old style, more shreddy metal. And Jacob is super into like the gent, like the like the Swedish band Meshuga, and like he talk today about the new Veil of Maya record and was all over his head. <laughs> he was super, super psyched on it. So it's, but if you, if I would pick like one or two bands that like influenced me in this band, the sound we have, it's uh, Motion City soundtrack and like New Found Glory, I would say. Yeah. And I can totally hear those influences when I listen to the band. It's you got the pop punk elements, but there's a metal element to it, too. And I think that being from, you know, being Swedish and being exposed to that much metal. Oh, yeah. like has, I love metal, too. Like metal is it's it's something about like just listening to angry music it's so it's it's a relief like oh i i can talk about it forever (laughs) breakdowns double pedals and just angry stuff it's fun it's weird that it's fun with angry music but it's super fun oh yeah and and like like i was saying you can hear that in your in in the music um that you guys create because it in a way it kind of sounds like you're creating your own subgenre of punk music because most of it lacks that metal influence riffage, uh, the shredding type guitar work in there that you guys have that a lot of other bands don't. I, I, I know a bunch of bands that has like similar plays like similar, but I, I would, yeah, I think they're, they're like, just like the, the metal instead of playing like a lot of bands that play like the easy core, whatever they call it is, is more, I would say, starts out as some sort of pop punk thing, while this thing started out more as a metal, just because of Jacob's riffing and stuff. Yeah. So we're we're super, super into metal and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's awesome, man. It, it, and it um, it gives you that opportunity to be different in a genre where everyone sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We try. We try to branch out. I mean, like it's. It's hard nowadays sounding unique. It's like almost, I would say it's very close to impossible. But we try to, like before when we did our earlier stuff, it was more like we had way more influences and we tried way more to sound like something we've already heard. But now we just use what we have and try to like 
develop our own thing, I guess. Yeah. And I hope we sound more unique now when, than we did before. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's up to the listener, I guess. <laughs> and I guess that we will find that out in the first quarter of 2018 when the new album comes out. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> 